Well, here we are again, document-based question. We've been working on taking an AP midterm to get a feel for the pressure and the layout and the time constraints that you'll have for the, the final AP exam in May. Well, here is a document-based question. It's posted on Google Classroom. I have the link there. And for those of you having trouble with, with AP, I've also shared this document with a couple of you. Well, so this is the familiar issue here. You have the prompt, which gives you the prompt itself and something to kind of warn you that you need to do. You've got your seven documents that you have to analyze, including images. And then you got the problem of tearing it down and making some sense out of it. And you know that obviously we want to get as many points as possible on the rubric. And I would say obviously the thesis is so, so important, but it's also, I think, the low-hanging fruit. That, that's at least the point we should get. Context, that is what's going on um, around that time that's significant as part of the issue. We've talked about that. Uh, and then we have the use of evidence. So we need to use three documents and argue. Uh, it says if you could argue and support an argument with six of the seven documents, that means you can only kind of blow one off, you could get two points. And if you're able to use additional information to fortify your argument, something you know outside of the documents, then you get um, you get all of those points. These points up here are points we could all get. I think this stuff to here too, if we want to go bold, the point of view um, points, I think you guys should be able to pull that off. The complexity one is the icing on the cake. That's like one or two percent of all students who get that. But why can't that be us? So I've, we've tried to help you by developing a tool. And I gave you an example of how to use that tool um, in the video. If you watched it, we have showed this before when we were looking at authority and state building in early modern history. So the idea is really in point is really the idea is because we want to keep this to 60 minutes. So you're not going to have any more than that. So you, if you go step by step, if you're methodical, you can't afford to waste energy through this. So we want to be able to do this methodically, step by step. You don't need to be eloquent. Don't worry about poetry. Don't worry about word choice. Just make the arguments. It's more important that you argue than you summarize the documents. Summarizing the documents is a waste of time. Don't try to be perfect. We want to be, have a good approach. We want to approach perfection. Know the time period that you're looking at for the document, for the question. So focus on that. So you do this sheet because this is going to be what's going to help you organize. Then check off what aspects of SPICE are we looking at. Probably no more than two. So you know what type of thinking you're going to look at. Also consider whether it's causation, like why something happened, or a comparison, looking at two different sets of ideas, or continuity and change. That kind of thinking will indicate what kind of thesis you'll have and how you should uh, shed those documents. You want to have that right on right off the bat. Now, we gave you a quick organizer for the seven documents. You don't have time to summarize them. What you need to do is look at the documents and say, what relevance does this document have to the way type of historical thinking and to the topic and the centuries I'm looking at? So you just need to jot down a couple ideas here. If, if you have this packed with small writing, you're taking too much time. Point of view, who's saying it and who's saying it relevant to the, what the message is. So you want to try to do some analysis to say, you know, given, say, for example, if it's an issue of dealing with gender and it's a woman or a feminist, that would be an important piece of a point of view. So you want to consider that. Don't do this last column until you've looked at all seven documents. But as you're looking, you might start to see a pattern appearing before you, the ways you could organize those documents to support two different arguments. And that's generally what you need to do. You want to group those documents, at least six of them, to fit two different arguments. So you want to make sure that your arguments or claims are sort of are, are parallel so that they could all work together to support a thesis. So after you go through those documents, and again, you see you, you, we only have – we we're only allowing about 10 minutes to read, analyze, and fill that sheet out. So you only have about two minutes per document, maybe a little less than two minutes per document to analyze it. So you only have time to read it once, and you have to be able to quickly analyze it. And then you go back and you organize those documents. Then you have two minutes more to kind of peruse your notes to say, what is the thesis that connects my two claims together? Be sure it's specific, qualifiable, defense, it's defensible, and that the documents will use to defend it. And we said, because of conditions A and B, I may claim C. That's basically it. Don't lean on the word greatly or much. We don't want quali quantified. We want qualified arguments. 
Two more minutes for context. We gave you guys some shared notes, and if you want to use those for right now, go ahead. What are specific events that are relevant to this in the same time period? Things that led up maybe 50 or 100 years beforehand, which were important to what we see here. And then we take a look at outside information, which is the same issue. So the idea, if you could incorporate one piece of outside information to support one of your claims, you get a point. And then finally, complexity. I said don't struggle too much on it. Only look at complexity if you really are moving quickly through these documents and you have time. Again, you're on your own to time it, but if you're taking more than 60 minutes on this, then the, the problem is we're probably not preparing ourselves for what we're going to be doing in May. Follow your plan. Make sure your thesis is relevant. Claim your evidence and source outside information. All, every paragraph should lead with a claim. Don't start with document two says. Make the claim first and then say how document two supports it. Um, make sure if you look at complexity, do that only if you think you have everything else pretty well buttoned up. And that's about how much time we have. So we laid this out pretty much like a science a couple years ago. So I would certainly use this. Please hold on to this sheet so that when you are looking at, um, when I'm looking at your work and we see there's a problem or there's something worked out well, you can go ahead and give yourself credit for that. We know where it's coming from. This talks about a thesis. It may be a claim that responds to the prompt. You don't just rest restate it. Um, context is basically what are some broader historical elements that are they're relevant to it. You need to connect it. Remember evidence, we want to argue with the documents and use at least six of them to get two points. And if you pull off that outside information, it's an extra point. And these two, if you look at point of view, you'll get this point. I think we could get this one. This one's a stretch, but I, I don't know why not. Other people get it, we get it too. Okay, so um, what happened to my, I wish you guys a lot of luck on this. Um, I hope things go well. And um, well, anyway, that's it. So.